Uh, we're streaming live on the internet now, so watch what you say about your wife. Gangnam Style! Hangover, 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 Party's over, it ain't over. Try to make a back of memory over and over. Hangover, 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 Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check. Check, one, two, check, 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 check. You might have to turn the gain down on this one. Check, check, one, two, check, 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 check
Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Alright. It seems to be. Check. I think it's feedback and what is the check one two check. Is this check. turned up the same amount as it usually is? Yeah. These two speakers. Those are never turned. Alright. Uh, I think just the gain turned down. I uh, get the slider up to that that main line, the it's, top, it's, and it kinda just gain just a little bit. Try it now. Check one two check 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 one two check. I think that's good. Um, and then you just adjust adjust the, adjust it from the gain a little bit until you, you get like it. Like that. Yeah, that's something. That's basically what you have to do. Try the other one. Try the other one. Check 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 one two check check one two check check. Yeah, I got a bunch of surge at home. Delicious. Drink it up and get sick. Bottoms up, get wasted. Hold it up, drink it up, live it up, give it up. Oh my God, to me, there's no good in it. Hold it up, drink it up, live it up, give it up. I can't stop making bottles pop until the wheels fall off. I don't see you. And I can't quit. I'll wake up in the morning do the same shit. Wake up in the morning, do the same shoe. Hang over. Hang over. Hang over. Hang over. And I find a single piece of meat. Winking and baking, shaking the fleas, taking and baking, drinking and cheese. Early in the morning, in the bathroom, on my knees, tipping and dripping, flipping the flow, whipping and dripping and drink on the floor. This is the only way that I was taught a long time ago. So for weekend, you will see a G and like me. Never would they never be the number like he wants. G A N G S T A. Nothing left to say. I just smoke my whole day. Huh? Baby, not as she hung. Hey, also not as she hung. Hey, she be back, call she be back. Drink it up and get sick. Bottoms up, get wasted. Pull it up, drink it up, live it up, give it up. Oh my God, do me there's no fucking limit. Pull it up, drink it up, live it up, give it up. But I can't stop making bottles pop until the wheels fall off. Hangover, 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 Party's over, it ain't over. Try to make a bag of memory over and over. Hangover, 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 Party's over, it ain't over. Can I find a single piece of me? Game over.
Hello, I'm Pat Reagan, and I want to play a couple songs uh, before Kill 20 begins. Closing time, 
This room won't be open till your brothers or your sisters come. So gather up your jackets, move it to the exit. I hope you have found a friend. Closing time. Turn what made ev every new beginning comes from some other. My voice projects on what to do. I know who I want. I just, I just interrupt for the next 15 minutes. I'm just gonna interrupt myself, interrupt the song, say something, and then go. I know who I want. If you, you guys have no idea how long I can keep this up for. I know who I want to take me home, take me home. Closing time. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Now I'd like to play my mom's favorite song. I know who I want to take me home. <laughs> she stood in the doorway wearing pants and a shirt. And another shirt on top of her first shirt. She said, I'm not even sure you know what you really want. I said, well, let me explain. with $50 checks and delicate reminders that I should go to church and I should call my grandma. I just want a girl whose mom is my grandma. I just want a girl who lives way out in Boston in a house with my dad and my brother Austin. I just want a girl, guys, I just want a girl who, guys, I just, uh, yeah, I know who I want to take me home. I just want a girl who raised my sister Megan. I just want a girl whose name is Vicky Reagan. It's my mom's name. tells me my comedy makes people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> For the record, though, she also once told me that Mount Rushmore was created naturally. <laughs> so I don't know what to believe. I'd like to close with a song if I could. 
this song is sort of an ode um, to very common Facebook behavior. I stayed up till 5 a.m. again. Of Facebook stalking my more successful friends. Jack's got a house, Jane's in Tangier. I made $11,000 last year. Welcome, your girlfriend's a 10, and mine's not even real. Facebook stalking my more successful friends. But I got cast on an HBO show. I'm on my ass watching HBO go. But I can't pay attention cause I'm checking my phone. Facebook stalking my more successful friends. You got 99 likes on a pic on Throwback Thursday Of you doing hover hand with Helen Hunt You guys know what hover hand is? Hover hands uh, where you, uh, you take a picture with a girl but you're too awkward to actually make physical contact so you just hover your hand slightly above. My timeline's dead year-round, except my birth. Usually people laugh when I go back into singing that part. I don't know what's going on, I'm on, uh, one. Uh, I should've just, okay, here we go. My timeline's, uh, I, I bought, mm, don't need to, don't need to tell you that. My timeline's dead year-round, except my birthday. Oh, so sad. <laughs> and I haven't had a friend request in months But I only get half the story when I'm far from, far from, far from Facebook stalking my more successful friends It's Jack's new house just got repossessed, James and jail in Tangier For writing fake checks, HBO got Zach Braff And fired poor Jeff and Jeff's cat Just got feline AIDS da 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 meow 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 Like they're living the dream But nobody's life is as cool as it seems You can bet your sweet ass They're just as lonely as me Facebook stalking My more successful friends Yeah, I can do one more. Sorry, I just got out. Okay, this this song this is a new song. It's called My New Girlfriend. Then Brian. One more song? Yeah, it's only eight of eight or seven. Okay. I don't know what that means. You got like seven more minutes. Oh, can I only do one so more song? Sure, you do whatever you want. <laughs> uh well I got I don't know. I don't know. Oh oh I can do I can fill seven minutes of time. What about Greg's dad? Yeah, there's there's Greg's, Greg's dad. dad. Close it up. I know who I want to take me home. I know who I want to take me home. I know who Acapella, right? I know who I want to take me home. You know, I really should have been uh, beaten as a child. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's here's uh, here's a new song and I'll play Greg's dad. This song's called My New Girlfriend. It's kind of like a Weezer slow jam. Oh, 
Hard boiled egg, oh hard boiled egg. Now baby, let me hold you tight. Take the place of my ex-girlfriend, like her you are white. You're both white, you're both white. You're both white, you're both white. On a hard boiled egg, it felt nice. We made out for hours. Meet my new girlfriend, she's a hard boiled egg, and she's white and she's rich. And I she's cage free, she's cage free. She's stinky, she's jiggly. Free, she's stinky, she's jiggly, she loves me, she's fucking rich in Omega 3. <laughs> <laughs> Her up at a Trader Joe's. She had five little sisters and six big bros. She's bad for my heart, but good for my soul. My sex life's great, but my cholesterol is out of control. I brought her to my house and hot boiled her, pampered her and spoiled her. And now she can't get enough of my tea. I took her to Broadway to see Wicked. I only had to buy one ticket. Time I almost ate her. Luckily, I remember that I take her. Sweet Lord, there's no love greater than the kind in my refrigerator. And that's the story of my life. The story of my life. <laughs> short song okay i like singing about hard i mean this isn't the funniest song but i like it it's about hard boiled eggs so here we go one two one two three four I, uh, guys give it up for the show you're about to see kill tony <laughs> it's gonna be great i'm gonna, I'm gonna play this little short song and we're gonna get off stage and the show's gonna start and it's gonna be really fun got some good guests got some hopeful hopeful comedians in the audience here we go. This song is called the Hard Boiled Egg Blues. This is a different Hard Boiled Egg song than the one I was going to play. Hard, but the thing about Hard Boiled Eggs is that there's no cleanup. You know? Like, if you're like a guy, there's no zero cleanup. You can even use the same pot. You don't even need to wash a pot before or after. Okay, here's the Hard Boiled Egg Blues. <laughs> a dirty little whore One egg feels good but two's amazing I want more More, 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 more Alright guys, that's it for me so it's gonna start in a couple of minutes. Let's get the energy up. You guys ready? You guys excited? This show tonight's gonna be great. All right. Cool. Yeah. 
for a brand new episode of Kill Tony Volume 2. Give it up for Tony Hatchley! Fuck yeah! Hello, live audience. This is it. We're here. We're here again. The craziest thing you could possibly do on a Monday is come to Kill Tony. Put your hands together for Brian Redband, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, guys. We are live right now via Ustream to the hundreds and hundreds around the world. Uh, and thank you, live audience, for being here. Welcome, everybody. Episode 95. We are very close to episode 100, Brian. That's right. April 13th, I believe it is. In the main room, instead of this room, we are plowing it together. 400 people in that room on a Monday night just like this. That's April 13th, episode 100 of Kill Tony. I don't want to give any secrets away, but... Uh, Bruce Buffer is gonna be there, everybody. Yeah, the voice of the UFC. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you what part in that show he's gonna have. The guy who announces people's names for the UFC. I don't wanna give anything away, but Bruce Buffer will not only be in attendance, but he will be part of that show. That's episode 100 of Kill Tony. Keep it going for Pat Reagan, live streaming, pre-show guru. Uh, so we're doing it that way from now on, Pat, where you just play that part, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure we're on the same page. Just making sure you're just watching the show like a diehard fan right now and not ready for me to call you back up here. <laughs> Pat Reagan, one more time, everybody. <laughs> our chef is our only sponsor. She cooks us a meal every Monday that's always delicious. She just got hired as Russell Peters' personal chef, comedian, millionaire, extraordinaire Russell Peters. And there she is right there. It's Elise Lane, everybody. Wow. Tonight she made us seared salmon with sauteed zucchini, squash, and eggplant, pine nuts, and herbs, and it's going to be delicious. So, for all of you that didn't eat before listening to this podcast or watching it, go fuck yourself. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to my man Frank, who made it all the way here from Buffalo, New York. He's in the middle of the room. Guys, he gave me the WrestleMania anthology. No big deal. Just showing his appreciation for a free podcast that's streaming around the world. He knows I love professional wrestling, specifically older professional wrestling. And now I have all the years between 89 and 94. The years that I love the most, Brian Redband. It's like he knows me. My virginity was lost on uh, disc number one. Really? <laughs> no, actually, disc number two. 19, or no, number three, 1987. 1987, wow, yeah. I was three. And I'm so happy about that. Oh, another thing which reminds me, guys, tonight, guess who's on Carson Daly? It's me, everybody. I'm on Carson Daly tonight. So for those of you watching the live stream right now, why not grab your remote control and set your DVR so that you can see me on Last Call with Carson Daly. You can set your DVR because I don't expect you to stay awake until 3.45 in the morning, which is when I will be on NBC. But it's just me on NBC for those few minutes. Is this where they, like, record you, and then they have, like, yep. a cut-in with you, like, yep. reflecting about life? Yeah. Where did you do that? At the Ice House? or uh, The show was at the Ice House, uh, the home of many Death Squad great shows, one of my favorite clubs out in Pasadena. And, cool. uh, but I do t I give a shout-out to the comedy store in it, and Youngstown, Ohio, and, most importantly... The words, Kill Tony, will be heard on NBC tonight, everybody. Woo! To show your act. You realize how cool you motherfuckers are? You're at that show. 
All right, let's get this thing going. Uh, every week we have a head of security who comes out and keeps us safe. It's always somebody different because the original guy who did it the first 30 some episodes told us that he was irreplaceable and that if we didn't figure something big out for him, he was going to leave the show. And he did. He fucking did. But to show him how replaceable he is, we've replaced him with literally a different iron patriot each week. This week's no different. Put your hands together for a repeat patriot. This. Full-blown autism. I mean, he really has autism. That's not a joke, but he owns it. He is. Autistic Thunder, the Autistic Patriot. Fuck yes. One of our favorite Patriots. This is about the uh, fourth or fifth time he's been keeping us safe. What's the exact number? I'm sure you know. Seventh. Wow. Talk right into the side of that microphone. You hear Seven. it? There it is. Josh Meyerowitz, everybody. Thank you. One of my favorite rising comedians yeah, yeah. through the ranks. How long have you done stand-up now, Josh? I just hit six years. Six years, this motherfucker. With autism. That autism does not hold you back. Some people say you're the rain man of comedy. Is that the right disease? No, right? No, no, that's right. classic <laughs> autism. I'm oh. high functioning. Whoa, <laughs> fuck yeah, I'm high functioning too right now. Do you look down on I those people? Joint before this guy. Do you look down on those kind of autistic people? No, I, in fact, I, I feel less pure. Oh, I, have wow. of, <laughs> I, feel, I have a bit of an inadequacy compared to I Honestly, when it comes down to it, I tend to not like other autistic people. So. Whoa, you hate on your own kind, huh? Not necessarily hate, just generally feel inadequate too. Why is that? Because I feel inadequate to them. Like I said, they're, they're, it feels like the more autistic you are, the smarter they are, the more... But, from, but from, my well liked. from my experience, autistic girls are easier. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie, uh, Brian Redman is here live streaming. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> it's all happening. No editing that one out. Um, Josh, have you ever hooked up with an autistic chick? Uh, almost. First girlfriend. Well, technically first girlfriend. Wow. wow. And I was right, right? Uh, no, because... How far did you, yes get, and no. you, How far did you get with her? Dry All right, let's not start with it. Let's ask, let's have him tell us, Brian. Uh, hey, did you uh, eat her ass with us? Whoa, I just said finger. You know that's what's next with you. You're an animal over here. You're like a seared salmon with sautéed zucchini from Elise Lane. I roll in the pan. I hate myself. She's at Elise Lane on Twitter, everybody. We have our patriot. Here he is, Autistic Thunder, everybody. You ready to meet tonight's comedians? Josh, are you excited for this? Yeah! Well, here we go. Here they are. Ladies and gentlemen, two more of my funniest friends. Put your hands together for Sam Tripoli and Joe DeRosa. Here they are, monsters, two of the best. John Myrera, I want to give a shout out to John Myrera, who got stuck at an airport today. Didn't you get stuck at an airport? I got an airport yesterday. Fucking US Air, those bastards. Sam Tripoli, everybody, one of our favorite guests. Joe DeRosa, this is his first time on the show. One of the funniest guys. Hi, buddy. Guys. How are you? Hello. Congrats Welcome. on Carson Daly, man. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's big. I remember when he used to have a show, so that's yeah. really great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, guys. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. That no. was the first thing I ever did on TV was Carson Daly. There you go. Yeah, he's a great, he's a really nice guy. Tall. Yeah, yeah. Real I, tall. I wrote uh, I wrote for the New Year's Eve special that he hosts, and uh, that was interesting. What What's, made it in? That's, that's interesting I'm, that you said that was interesting. Because I'm, let's put it this way, I think you could probably figure it out. I, you know, start with the most extreme type of joke and then I have to dial I have to rewrite it seven times so that it's possible to be said on NBC. This is the Hinchcliffe method. This is what it is known as in the writer's rooms yes. around town. Yes. Unless it's They a, call it the Hinchcliffe method. It's true. That's only for uh, the few, you know, network things that I've done, but mostly the first draft's the one. So what, so I, what, you just like, you tried to get a couple AIDS jokes on the New Year's Eve yeah. thing, and they were like, oh, maybe that's not our demographic right now. <laughs> that's pretty much Just it. use my method, that's all. Yeah, you, you were, pulled it back. You were like, that ball dropped faster than Easy es T-cell. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. 
<laughs> you, know, you can't say easy E. And I mean, by the way, what ends up happening, <laughs> what ends up happening in the writer's room for that show is, is you end up writing so many ball dropping jokes that at the end of it, you have to whittle it down to like the best ball Best dropping. ball joke. And what was the best ball joke? You know, I knew you were gonna fucking say that, but I can't remember yes. for the life of me, but I'm sure it was hilarious. Must have been memorable. Josh, every single week, the Patriot, whoever that Patriot is, asks the guest questions. Uh, what do you got for our guest this week? Yes, uh, today, my question, starting with Joe DeRosa. Yeah. Joe DeRosa, if you don't know, wrote a, a book with Robert Kelly and Bill Burr called Cheat, A Guide to Infidelity. Yeah. My question is, have you ever cheated on someone and actually said afterwards, ah, I should have done that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we each wrote stories about cheating in the book, and my story was when I cheated on a girl that kept telling me, she wasn't my girlfriend, but I wasn't allowed to fuck other people. <laughs> and then I cheated on her, and then I told her in a diner, and she cried. And I was like, I shouldn't, I know I shouldn't have done it. And then uh, she paid for the meal, which I felt really bad about. So it's a win-win. Uh, I guess so, yeah, I got out scot-free. And I told, I remember telling uh, comedian Marina Franklin afterwards that I let her pay for the meal, and she goes, oh, no, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, that's just brutal. Yeah, I didn't, I was young, man, I was like 27, I didn't know. Oh, that's I really don't young. I condone that's... cheating. Uh, <laughs> you probably couldn't even pay the bill. Yeah. I didn't have any money, I'd right. come back from featuring at, like, Boca Nuts yeah. in Boca Raton, Florida. So I'm not proud of it, I don't condone cheating. The book will tell you how to cheat. <laughs> Not that you should cheat. Did, what was the reason for you? You weren't allowed to fuck other girls, but she was she fucking other guys. I don't know, man. It's weird, you know. Like I've never trip. encountered a woman that has crazy guidelines for the relationship <laughs> right. before. Did she read time. this? Did she read your the book, or did, you, did she? Know no, no. It? This was way before the book. Oh. Uh, we wrote the book because we, we the book is just supposed to be funny, but we made a movie about cheating that was a comedy. And, so we wrote the book, but no, I don't know why. She would say, I'm not ready for a commitment, but you're not allowed to sleep with other people. That's... I don't get it. Yeah. If you're not allowed to fuck other people when you're married, and you're not allowed to fuck other people when you have a girlfriend, when are you allowed to fuck other people? <laughs> Technically you... never. Thank you, the single guy who's yeah. 48 when you're up there. Creep... Yeah. You know what it is? Who... When, you, when, when you're a you creepy, allowed? creepy swinger, that's what it is. You're allowed to, when you look like you just live in hot tubs in Florida. That's when you're allowed to... I don't, I don't want to have to hit an SNL level sketch yes. of creepy before yeah, I'm allowed to fucking... I'm fine. You know, I think people need to really start looking into open relationships. Like, because you can love somebody but want to fuck somebody else. Right. And I think some people go, like, I'm fine, honestly, if my girlfriend fucks... As long as she doesn't get pregnant by a black guy, that's the only rule. Because I'm not just be able to explain it off. That's it. If I can explain it off, I'm fine. If this comes out fuck, fucking Fifty Shades of Black, I'm fucked. You know what I'm Was saying? Was this one of Tony's bits for the New Year no, show? No, no, no. no, no. I, you're giving us an open invitation to fuck your girl, though, so, guys. If she's into it, I, I, we've been together 11 years, so you feel free. Open relationship, but the black guys have to pull out. Sam is so weird. Every yes. comedy show Sam does in town is like, the pussy fest. Actually, I've never done People a show called gonna, the pussy fest. It's going to be a cum bath in here. And it was like, I, I've been with the same girl for 11 years. <laughs> See, by the way, it's just who I am. By the way, Sam, if I was you, I would say that uh, the only thing that she is allowed to get pregnant with is a black baby because that's probably the only chance you have of raising an athlete. Oh, that's true. That is true. You guys thought that was mean, but he's being honest. Right. That's all. Is our, when's the last time you saw an Armenian on the NBA? Dude, I just boxed! <laughs> you boxed? I was just what, in Vegas. Pizza? What the fuck are you talking about? What did you box exactly? Oh, funny, you funny. son of a bitch. Uh, speaking of sex, I like when Brian was like, Oh, I lost my virginity to disc one of this in 1984. Yeah. They didn't have no, these discs in disc, 1984. No, disc three, what was on it, which is uh, number three, WWF3. Oh, it's Wrestle... Okay, explain, I really thought that was going to hit hard. It got nothing. Yeah. Explain the, the, the romance, romance yeah. of this. Oh, explain God. the lead-up and the romance and how you finished the job fucking during WrestleMania. <laughs> Were you fucking during the WrestleMania? Or were you just saying that the year was? It was homecoming. It was on pay per view. My friend and me <laughs> double dated. He went upstairs to fuck his girlfriend that he had already fucked while watching WrestleMania upstairs. How old were you? Uh, freshman in high school. Wow. 
I think. And uh, and then uh, I went downstairs to his basement, which was a mattress in the in the in a basement. Oh shit! <laughs> and you thought you were meeting the chicks. This uh, guy's. I'm very nice to women. And I just remember like not enjoying it because I really wanted to see what was on the TV. So you were losing your virginity, but you were preoccupied yeah. with fake men in tights fighting. Fu I remember it being pretty fucked up. I'll tell you. I like banging to wrestling because you feel like the announcers are talking about you. Yeah. Oh no! He's one. down for the count! Yeah. Here go. comes a hard drop! <laughs> but what's weird, Red Band... That was supposed to be shitty, guys. It was that was supposed to be a shitty By the way, that was really funny. Was I, being know, I didn't laugh at that. <laughs> I'm gonna, you guys gotta pay attention Sam. a little better. Uh, real quick. Do you know, like, if you, if you did that enough, you would only be able to come to pro wrestling. Scientists, yes, scientists have discovered them. You can make yourself a attracted to anything if you orgasm enough while it's That's happening. That's not true because I could barely come with any other dog in the room. <laughs> my dog in my room watches me every time. Okie dokie, here we go. <laughs> Your next question from Josh is for Sam Tripoli. Hopefully it's, uh, we get a shorter answer. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, uh... You have no question. No, I do. I just, I'm, I'm getting into it. You don't okay. have to interrupt. Much love. Whoa, you just got fucking autistic blast. Truth machine is so mean to me. That came straight from the gut. He dude. must have autism because he just got in a fucking weird challenge with me. He yeah. just got autistic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Seriously. Oh, you're killing. You really are. These are shit jokes on purpose. Uh, oh, come on. Here. All right. Josh, what's your right. question? Find it out Sam? there. Live uh, podcast, baby. Yeah. Uh, my question for Sam is Sam does a show called. Uh, the Naughty Show, it's a stand-up comedy and uh, burlesque dancing. Have you ever done something that, not even you, has anything ever happened on The Naughty Show that you got in trouble for? Have I ever gotten in trouble for anything that happened in The Naughty Show? Oh, yeah, man, tons of times. Uh, the, the first time we did a show at the uh, Improv, this isn't necessarily funny, but I, it's one of my favorite moments at the Improv. Uh, we had Belladonna, this adult film star. She was pole dancing. And out of nowhere, she pulled out like a 10 inch black dong. And as she was pole dancing, she deep throated the whole thing and did pole work. And uh, the improv didn't appreciate that very much. <laughs> and, uh, but it was one of the greatest moments of comedy of all time. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, oh, so there's a, there's a follow, -up, follow up question. Well, uh, Autistic follow up. Yes. Follow -up, yeah. No, because you mentioned about your girlfriend. Uh, not hate to be a creep, but can I have sex with your girlfriend? Uh, oh, she can do it. If she fucked you, I'd break up with her. That's oh, all I gotta say. Oh, oh, she can fuck anybody else but you. I've seen your autistic dick. It's not pretty. It is small, yeah. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty bad. Really? Can we see it real no. quick? Real no. quick. No. Uh, no. Show Sam. Beyonce over here your dick real quick. No. Sam Why would you like your dick for? I'm not even going to go Sam stuff. <laughs> What, what, what has this turned into already? I don't know. This is partially my fault. Right? It's See, like this mind. type of thing, the show your dick thing, that would not fly on the New Year's Eve show. <laughs> my apologies. That That's why I only wrong. write for basic cable. <laughs> hey, Sam, I love you. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah, I there he is. That. Guys, you know what this is. This is the craziest show in the world. 60 seconds is what comedians get. Guys, you're surrounded, realizing it or not, there's comedians all around you. Smack packed in the back of the room right now. They all signed up for the chance to get pulled out of this bucket, have their name read, and they come on stage and do 60 seconds. And then we talk to them about anything in the world that we want to talk to them about. Comedians, you know your 60 seconds is up and you hear the sound of a kitty. Aww. That's so cute. Wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. It's <laughs> like standing by. Yeah. That's a really lame one. You guys have done it before? I need to get yeah, this. I, I was just gonna say, uh, West Hollywood Bear used to be a bear, and uh, slowly over the last 30 episodes, it's gotten stranger and stranger, and just now it's just unrecognizable and pretty annoying. Was it a bear, like animal bear, or a like game yeah. bear? It was just a bear. A bear. Like He's a bear. bear. Roar, and then it was really loud, and what was funny was the volume of the bear would interrupt the people like the, the performer if they kept trying to go along. I like that. And it gets a hard laugh every time, but now there's just like a bunch, the bunch bears of sound effects. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the second rule of comedy is if it works, don't do it, don't keep doing it. Right. 
Yeah. Just change it up. This this is a hot crowd tonight. Oh, they, no, it's good. Good. <laughs> this is an, there's an electricity in this room. <laughs> Did all of you drive from Buffalo? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ, oh, Also, guys. also, some people from Georgia. Get the guy from Georgia a round of applause. Georgia? <laughs> We're in Georgia. We're in Georgia. Atlanta, I'm going to be at the Laughing Skull in April. Wow. Look at that. Come out and watch me rock 50 people. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You guys ready to get this Small thing? Club. You guys Small ready club. to get this thing started or not, nice everybody? Club. Here we go. Nothing's going. I'm excited to be there. The whole cast is here, everybody. All right. Put your hands together for your first comedian doing 60 seconds tonight. He goes by the name of Steve Benetier. <laughs> Blacklisted. Whoa, you're done in Hollywood. <laughs> Let it happen, Sam. Oh. Oh. Go suck yourself off. That's what happens when you get blacklisted. The autistic guy makes sounds. Your next comedian doing 60 seconds goes by the name of Rab. Rab. Fuck yeah, everybody's scared to death right now. Nobody wants to go first in front of this crowd. That means you just got blacklisted. Go fuck yourself! Are you gonna change it at some point? Or are you gonna stick with the go fuck yourself? And you can just leave the helmet up if you want. Oh, I, I you know, I do it so sporadically that I figured I don't need to change it too much. I'll you are the most, stuff. you are the most adorable 250 pound man. I, <laughs> so I love you too, Tony. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Kip Hart, everybody. Kip <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, I work at Disneyland, um, Jungle Cruise. Uh, it's funny at the Jungle Cruise, they want us to uh, pretend like the animals are real. And now they want to start drug testing us. Which <laughs> <laughs> they make up their mind. This, uh, this little girl came up to the dock one night and she had her princess dress on. Uh, she's probably six. I already hate her. <laughs> and she has a dress and she's swinging along and she looks up at me and she says I'm a princess and I look down at her and I said no you're not your parents just dress you up to make up for the love they can't give you <laughs> and you know what else there's no Santa Claus <laughs> seven minutes that should be about a minute it's 51 <laughs> seconds oh my yeah. goodness you got a Seven second. I blasted through that. That's All right. All right. I'll yeah. take that time. Fuck yeah. Wow. Wow. So you really work on the jungle cruise. I do, yeah. So what, did you go to prison at some point? Did you like uh, do no. drugs? Well, how'd you end up at Disneyland? Uh, yeah. Just a part time job. It started as a part time part time job, you know, way back when. And so a summer job became a career. Is that what happened? Uh, it's not really a career. It's, I still do it part time, and I uh, I use it kind of use it for my comedy thing. I use it to kind of keep timing and. Whatnot, it so. seems like it's really affecting your mood and your life. <laughs> I mean, you're, the, it's the place of happiness for well, kids, you know, and you're telling this kid that she should die of AIDS. You have, some, <laughs> you have some anger inside. You got to get it out. You know, <laughs> take oh, it out you're full of rage. Quick. That's nice. Do you do you like the job? Oh, uh, I do. Yeah, it's fun. It's actually very easy. What kind of hours are you work? working there? Uh, I do about thirty hours a week. That's part time. That's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not work, you know. You're just how many just terrorizing kids? That's all. Yes. How many runs is that a day on the boat? So it's an eight-minute trip. We probably do thirty-five or forty a day in an eight-hour trip. God damn. So you do thirty-five or sets. forty sets of eight yep. minutes. Wow. Did they really drug test you? Uh, they were talking about, that's where that joke came from, they were talking about actually drug testing everybody, but they think the union kind of... Well, yeah, because I mean, that's the best place to do drugs. Do you notice a lot of people, <laughs> do you notice a lot of people on drugs there? Because I know so many people that just... Oh, trail. oh yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, all the time. You can see them, and they're, they're great when they get on the boat, because then you can just, like, nail them. Do you ever mess with them, or what have you, like, oh, for sure. like, what have you done to somebody that's on mushrooms on the boat? Oh, you know, it depends on how, what their mood is. If they're right. disturbing everybody, then I just shut them down. But, uh, you know, you can just... 
How do you <laughs> shut him down? Give me an example. Oh, example. Uh, this like, one guy was really out of it. He was, you know, he's cussing. You know, got kids yeah. around. So I just stopped the boat. Uh -huh. And I said, shut your mouth. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Oh my goodness. What so you how long have you been how doing that? Uh, about six years. How's You're a good joke writer, man. Thank, Thank you. You have some really good structure. You you don't waste you know, I, I know we're not supposed to get too serious here, but you know, I always do a show, people always talk forever you don't waste any time. You get right to it. Well, you got a minute. You got to get right on it. Well, so. you'd be amazed. You'd be yeah. amazed. But yeah. I thought yeah. your jokes were great, man. Thank you. Yeah, good stuff. What else do you do for fun, Kip? What, what's like? What do you do? Like this is all enjoyment. I do. Enjoyment. Just uh, stand up. My any spare time I have. Do you have a family or anything? Uh, I do. <laughs> yeah. He has two kids. Uh, oh, you do. Yeah, you yeah. take them. Been married thirty years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What? Holy shit. Happily. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we're yeah, still it's a live podcast. I get it. <laughs> she could be watching the right now. No. Want to know how to? <laughs> I'm looking up for used copies of Amazon right now. All right. So, there's plenty. Trust me. Kip, <laughs> what else? Well, I think it's... You... I, I'm gone. Go on. I just like... Uh, how You got into a little later. In the, what, what were you doing before you did this? Before comedy? Yeah. Just work you know that's how I, I we talked about this before that's how i got into comedy was a friend of mine put together a show with just jungle cruise skippers there was a and jungle cruise skipper show yeah, it's called skipper stand up <laughs> and we just still we uh do stand up and uh he asked me to do a show and i'd never even thought about doing comedy before and i wrote eight minutes and it worked pretty good and i kind of got hooked on it so then i started Who's the biggest asshole of Disney? Like Ooh. Mickey Mouse going to play Uber. Uber? You're going to get fired, man. They yeah, you yeah. Talk about yeah. Shit like that. I can always do Uber or something. Uh. Get fired. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then I want to know how much Nazi sympathizing goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> we have to give the Heil Hitler when we walk in. <laughs> yeah. wow. No, it's Look not. Uh, it's really not, uh, not prevalent. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, Fuck yeah, man. Well, I, think he he's, I think he's a good writer. Yeah. He answered it seriously just to keep his job at the very end. He's like, no, it's not very prevalent. Yeah. No. It's yeah. like, no, we no, I'm just being truthful. No, I know. We're just kidding. How long have you been doing stand-up in L.A.? About six years. Well, I live in Orange County, but yeah, six gotcha. years. Yeah, I've been gotcha. here. Gotcha. It's great. Crazy, it's craziest fun. thing you've seen on this. Cruise. Yeah, what is the weirdest shit that's gone on? Oh, man. Uh, well, uh, they have this one called Bats... Day where they, where they you know, like the uh, emo people dress up, you know, they all their garb and stuff and the bad ears. Oh. And I was uh, I was actually at Big Thunder Mountain one day and I was grouping people onto the trains and this this girl walked up and she was in her black garb and she had a leash and she said and I, and I said how many in your group? She goes two and she turned the corner and she had a guy on the leash with a collar oh, dragging him back to the back of the, uh, the train. Can, yeah. I, can I just say something? Yes, sir. I love that right after you said there's no Nazi sympathizing at Disney World, your next story, the first thing was, I was grouping people onto the trains. We <laughs> 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 didn't have coal, so we had to so use two. Rarely <laughs> phrased that way Excellent. outside of Nazis. I love it. <laughs> Kip, we love you. We're rooting for you, buddy. Thanks yeah, so much. Come back anytime. Thanks Kip so much. Hard, everybody. That wasn't really that day either. That was more like... BDSM day, yeah. Totally. It's like, it's like <laughs> fist your sub day or something like that. Yeah, interesting stuff. I didn't oh, even know there was a bat day sorry. at Disney. I know, I know there's a bunch of Batmans running around. I thought that, no, yeah, it's just. sounds weird. I think he Dominatrix and subs <laughs> walking around. Being I went weird. on that cruise with my mom, and I'm wondering if he was the guy doing the thing. I just can't wait to go to Disneyland to see if I can find him now that I know him. <laughs> yeah. Because now I know somebody I can smoke with. Like, hey, just stop the cruise right here underneath this tree, real quick. Right? Smoke yeah, you do that. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Disney World. Have you, have you been fucked up at Disney Disneyland? I got really. When I was in Florida, we went to Disney World for spring break once because we were really cool. And uh, I got so fucking high at the campground we were staying at to go to Disney World, and it took so fucking long to get from the trams to the parking to what that I was sober by the time we got in. And I, it was such a letdown, man. I maybe got like a. 10 minutes of it's a small world high and then like that would you know what i mean first ride you know what i'm saying yeah. josh you ever been to disneyland uh yeah once oh. 
once. <laughs> I, I, Josh told me, put the, ma put the mask up. So. You don't have to do. Don't listen to him, man. You're a lot bigger than him. You can, if you really want to, if you want to leave the mask down, you can. But well, I, does it come across good? It, it, that's fine with it. Up. All right, cool. But I like that routine you do where yeah. you forgot it was down and you pull it up. That's funny. Yeah, keep let, doing let, it like that. Let's keep Just it like that. the movies. It's, it's like a uh, space ball. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Keep doing it like that. Every time. Whatever works. Yeah, I, I went to Disneyland once. I didn't like all the crowds. Really? It makes me anxious. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Anything fun happened when you were there? No, the most fun I had is they had an arcade. I know. An arcade. I, I'm a big arcade nerd, so. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I like arcade games, and I had more fun hanging out and just playing those than going on rides. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for the next <laughs> comedian, Daniel White, everybody. Yeah. 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 I love how people get excited for people, like it's the price is right. How are you doing? So, to talk about something. So I saw a GIMP on the bus the other night. And if you don't know what a GIMP is, it's one of those S&M slaves. This guy was in the leather, he had on the mask and everything. And Nobody on the bus cared, you know, and I was sitting there thinking, like, why the hell is this guy on the bus and not in his cage? You know what I mean? It, he really ruined my image of Gimps, you know? Like, if, like some slave, you know? Like, so he, I noticed his little handcuffs. They were novelty handcuffs. I go, this guy's getting off of work. Getting off of work. What's it like when he gets home? Everything he tells his wife's got to sound terrible. How was work, honey? Baby, I'm, I'm beat. <laughs> Boss is up my ass the entire day. He doesn't appreciate that I worked a double for an hour. I bend over forward for these pricks, I swear. Oh, man, it well, it wasn't all bad. One guy gave me a pretty big tip. And he stiffed me. There was a paper jam in Bob's ass. Sorry. What was the last one? I said there was a paper jam. In Bob's ass. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say that one's overkill. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought you just made this shit up because we just I just said the word gimp and I'm like, oh, he's just freestyling the word gimp. But that but you no, actually that prepared gonna, for this. That, that was, was gonna be the minute that you were gonna do, even if Kip before you hadn't said that the weirdest thing out of all of his years at Disney World was some guy in a mask getting. The Lord works in strange and mysterious ways. Uh, I'm yeah. aggravated. That your play on words with the SM stuff got laughs at my wrestling announcement play on words thing bombed. <laughs> These, that means the crowd's being picky and choosy right now. No, they're getting warmed up. No, he looks just, like I'm you. Just joking. Jesus. You guys look like like you're the young version in your cocaine days, and, and you look I'm like you found version. Jesus and cleaned up. I was gonna say, I'm the just want to go door to door meeting everybody, tell them about the Lord. Yeah, it's actually funny that you say that. I'm gonna jump in on this one because Daniel, we met you what four to six months ago or yeah, something like four that. Month, four four months. Four months ago. I remember you coming on the show a couple times. You got on like a couple weeks in a row right when you started, right? And what I've noticed is the last like month or two, I've noticed you out back in the pot smoking area where comedians smoke a lot of pot and you'll like run into other comedians there and you know guys from the show like every few minutes you know new people rotate in and out it's the pot smoking area of the comedy store <laughs> but what's interesting is the, most of the people come in and out but what daniel has done is he has basically marked his territory <laughs> in this area because he realizes that pretty much every comedian at some point of the night is going to go smoke pot there and then he can just keep Smoking pot, and you get to, and you get to meet people. It's like a Starbucks. He's had his like a, 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 his iPad, and his keyboard, right, right. and he's just sitting there working. You have a guitar sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you really do. That's that is the true part. Yeah. You like set up camp, like you have the Wi-Fi code or something like that. Used to. So how's that been working out for you? What's the deal? You've been smoking a lot more pot than I'm guessing you were four to six months ago, right? Oh, uh, marginally, I'd say yeah, just. So yes, is the answer. O OPP too. What's OPP? Other people's pot. Right. Oh, man. Don't be sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, the bear showing its, rearing its ugly face. Um, How long have you been doing comedy? About, I've been uh, doing it on stage for four and a half months. I was oh, here the first so that time was, when I came yeah. on. Oh, I, I, I didn't realize that was the same time. You period. started, did you start here? Yeah. First time on stage. So you're, time. how long have you been doing it? Four and a half months. Wow. See what the fuck we create here at Pilsen. Oh, Only oh, four I'm... and a half months. Sure, it still took 40 seconds for him to get to it, but he had like six or seven good 
Yeah. A fucking banger. And the right premise there. is funny. And yeah. it's like a really smart premise that you probably don't have the skills yet to really <laughs> deliver. Right. Because you're just still fucking, you're a white belt right now. Right. But you're trying some black belt shit, in my opinion. That's, yeah. a, that's a really funny idea. Yeah. That, and again, like, it's like I said, it's like, Biggest thing new comics do is they always just over-explain everything. No doubt. Like, if great examples, you're like, no one in the bus seemed to care at this guy's hair. That's really not pertinent to what you're talking about. It's like, this guy getting off work. Right. So you should have just jumped right into that. But it's a funny fucking premise, dude. Yeah, this was your best week, definitely, for sure. Yeah. I don't know if you were less stoned or less hacky. Because, like, I mean, like, last time, you were, like, you know, with the guitar and stuff, and it was just too much. This was, like, the first time where I, I thought, like, wow, that was, like... Almost a very well written premise, joke, tag, like everything was yeah, like, you great. Just have to, you just have to get right into it. Yeah. Like Sam was saying, just start, you know, with the guy who was on a bus. How do, how do you not have time to change from work? Boobity boobity bangity bang. And then you're already cooking. Joe DeRosa knows about cooking. About cooking? Meth. <laughs> well, what do you mean? I, don't, I have no idea. I do cook. Oh, really? Yeah, I cook. Perfect. I, I cook. had no idea why I said it like that. I just knew that I was going to hand it off to Oh, guys. I cooked for myself tonight. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Ooh. What'd you make? I made two uh, chicken, bre chicken breasts, and I made a salad. Mm. And uh, I fed my dog a concoction of things. Well, how did you prepare the chicken? On, on your stove, oven, microwave? Yeah, I usually go stove or oven. You know, I'm one of those traditionalists when it comes to cooking chicken. Right. Uh, take a raw piece of chicken. Very conservative. Yeah, put it on the stove or maybe in the oven. Uh, Doesn't put on a spick. I don't think you can spit, you mean? Yeah, whatever. Spick. <laughs> Give it to a spit, he'll cook it. Mexican? Sorry. Oh, my God. That's funny. I'm stupid. Daniel, what do you eat for dinner tonight? I ate burritos tonight. Burritos? Did you cook Whoa. it? Yes, I did. Oh, really? Nice. What'd you put in it? Beans, oh, rice. I didn't have any meat. Beans, rice, sour cream, cheese, sriracha. Now, did you not have meat by choice? Or because you can't afford meat right now? <laughs> can't afford meat right now. Yeah, yeah dude. You're on the grind, baby. That's beautiful, though. When you start putting meat in those burritos, you're going to be like, I fucking remember. Oh, I remember yeah. what I didn't have. I made it. Seriously, that's the shit you remember, man. I remember when 50% of my burrito was just sour cream burrito. <laughs> You're just eating that cold mix. Of... Hot dog burritos. Don't, don't don't knock it. Just try it. Trust me. Wow. Fuck yeah. That's uh. That's just not even. That's not even for the taste. That's just for really what it like does to your physique. Like protein. <laughs> like it really will help you. You you do a lot of push-ups. Uh. Right. <laughs> push -ups no. Does he look like he does? <laughs> Fuck yeah, Daniel. You, uh, just quick, did you really see a guy like that in the bus? I actually did. If Kenny, okay, if Kenny that's why I like it even more. For me. Did he pay his bus fare? He paid his, but got on the bus and actually... Wait, did he, like, unzip a part of his leather outfit? He wasn't totally Pulp Fiction style. Like, uh, he had on all the leather. He might have been coming from just a party. Walt Disneyland? Right. Right. And he had on, he still had a mask on, but he had his eyes. He wasn't, like... You know. Yeah. Oh God. yeah. <laughs> we all like to relax when we get off work. <laughs> and I, but what's funny is that I remember, uh, you know, when I first started stand up, I was taking the bus a lot around town. And in LA, it's so hard to sell yeah. those jokes. It's so hard to relate to riding the bus in LA for audiences. So I remember chiseling away. I probably have written eight, ten minutes worth of riding the L.A. bus jokes that just never went anywhere, but that's probably uh, probably a good one. It's my second bus bit on this show, too. Wow, look at you. The bus mm -hmm. boy himself. I like a bus bit. It's not really a bus joke, though. It's more, You could still tell that joke you guys walking down the street and saw the guy. Yeah. It doesn't have to... Yeah. You don't even need the bus. I would just say that guy is a, has a... Well, it doesn't matter what I would say. As you can see by my 50% success ratio tonight, I know Stop what I'm talking about. Stop overthinking it, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're really... Yeah, seriously. Really breaking it down. No, I'm just... A, I like to self-deprecate. This yeah. is the DeRosa humor. Oh, I love That's it. his I love thing. It. I said the word spick. What do you want, man? Just like... <laughs> It's all good, dude. You're doing all... You're killing it. The chicken on a spick. Yeah. Uh, his name is Jorge. <laughs> Daniel, what else? Uh, where are you living that you're taking the bus this long of a distance? Now I'm living in East Hollywood. East Hollywood, yeah. Yeah. Where, where, I didn't even know there was an East Hollywood. Yeah, it's, where, hips, it's where I live. Where, it's where is hip. that? Gay Mexicans? What is that? Uh, it's, uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> Pretty much. Silver Pike, kind of by uh, Barnstall Park, Sunset, Vermont area. Nice. Try nice. that, brother. Jumbo. A lot of tranny hookers that way, huh? Well, a whole bunch. You ever All just celebrate one night, just get a nice $40 <laughs> blowjob? Yeah. Can't even afford meat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they got meat, they'll go. fuck that burrito, bro. <laughs> It'll look like sour creams all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, Tony. Really? See what I did there? I went back to the Tony, sour cream. Tony, keep it clean, man. I went back to the sour cream. I thought that they'd be with me. Call back. This is my brand of humor. This is... This is what you do. Dial a bath for uh, Carson Daly. Daniel White, I had so much fun with you. Daniel's cool. He started here. Good job, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel, Daniel. Daniel, Daniel I want you to get a job at the comedy show. How old are you, Daniel? 20, almost 28. You should get a job here. I think that would help your comedy. I think it would, too. I'd love that. Keep it up. You're funny. You're funny, funny dude. Take care. Good job, Daniel. There you go. Bye-bye. Gotta be honest with you. Two really good guys waiting around. I know. Next, you know it's, it's amazing because obviously I'm positive that Daniel didn't have that many punchlines four and a half months ago when he started, so it's fun to watch everybody grow. At this point, someone will be like, can we get a girl on stage? No, well, we can't. Tony, I never me, noticed, you say everything with zero emotion. Yeah. You're like, I had fun with you, Daniel. Thank yeah. you for coming. Yeah, it's, very, uh, it's fun to watch people grow. You sound like yeah. the Sons of the Lambs. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a robot <laughs> that they're still working on the emotions chip. Yeah, oh, yeah that's me. Yeah. What is that? Oh, oh that's you. Um, yeah, I, I speak emotionless. I over-enunciate, and I'm really good at it. And, uh, what happened to you? I You're like a gay robot. No, I just, uh, I just never learned to, uh, not speak perfect English. I don't know. It's like there's no real accent. Dude, I'll tell you something about Tony, man. You could put Tony in a room with, like, the Pope, Obama, uh, whoever, uh, Steve Jobs, all these things, and he would feel like he, he should be perfectly right. with everybody. Like, yeah, we're all winners here, I, right? I, I, absolutely. I think they should fucking know. Right. It's like, oh, wow, this guy... I've always said that. That's why he's gonna, he's gonna go really far, because yeah. he always thinks he should be in the room. I always. Do. I, think, I think those guys would fucking love having a piece of the future of comedy, yeah. which is a really big deal. They say it's only the best medicine. <laughs> why wouldn't Barack want to... He's, he's having health care issues. Uh, listen, Why not have the not, best medicine, you're man? Not, you're not far off, man. That Carson Daly credit's gonna open quite a no. few doors in this town. Hey, Steve Jobs is gonna be calling true. your number. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon, dude. All the people high on cocaine still up at that time are gonna enjoy your shit. Uh, uh, I love it. DVR it, everybody. You can watch it anytime if you DVR it. Uh, Okay, this looks like a new name. I'm excited for this. I hope I pronounce it right. The handwriting is insane. Put your hands together for Hayden Viv Neal. Oh, it's a dude! Yeah. Oh, yeah, at the end. Okay. Hayden, everybody. Come on. Yeah! Uh, hey, guys. I come here from San Francisco, and I'm actually not supposed to hear, be here today. I'm actually, I was supposed to have a show up there. But this is the closest I could park. No. Oh. Guys, uh, I love dogs, though. Dogs are like my favorite thing in the world. I realized recently that I treat dogs on the street exactly the way you're not supposed to treat women on the street. Like, every time I see a dog walking past, I'm just like, Hey, cutie. I like the way you walk. I like your legs. And then I touch them without asking. <laughs> No, uh, I like dogs more than like humans. Like, I'll walk down the street and I'll say good morning to five dogs and I won't look another human in the eye. <laughs> like, I should basically only tell jokes for humans at this point, for dogs at this point. Like, <laughs> you see, the reason you guys didn't like that joke is because that joke is for dogs. <laughs> Yeah, Hayden. Hi. I love your style, dude. We're, let's get into it. Uh, the I love the dog thing. I mean, that seems like it's what you came oh, here to oh, talk oh, about. Oh, oh, oh. I like it. Did you open up your set right with a San Francisco joke? San Francisco joke in Los Angeles? Because I did. <laughs> Very astute of you. 
<laughs> yeah, like... but you, guess what he didn't do? What? Say the word spick. No. <laughs> oh. Okay. Should I have? No. No, no make it no, 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 went over. <laughs> no, it just that was interesting. No, yeah, he, but yeah, yeah. Thank you. How long have you been doing stand-up? <laughs> uh, two years, two and a half years. Two and a half years. <laughs> Sam Fran. Uh, yeah. There's a black guy in the back of the room. What's your name again? Haiti. Haiti, that's right. That just finds it hilarious. Your voice or something like that. Haiti, what's going on back there? What are you cracking up about? Is, is that what it is? What do you like about his voice? <laughs> oh, I had a feeling that's what it was. I think he was. I think you guys dick hard. That's what happened. Haiti. Oh, is it a girl? Then he came up here. Yeah, it sounds like. No, yeah, yeah. We know what feminine means. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. This is a mixed nuts, man. I um, love it. It's like Haiti's sense of humor is still I, locked in 97, where the sound of a gay man is just like, oh, 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 oh my god. I couldn't believe it when I heard that. Like, Whoops. I like your, I like your style, man. I think, uh, I think you're onto something. I think it's just gonna take time to develop. Yeah, you man. should hit some of the, some of the, you know, I don't know if you already do, but hit some of the independent rooms, man. Like, yeah. I think some of those coffee house shows might do you well where you can feel a little less pressure on stage, just kind of get into something a little weirder, because I think that's probably what you're trying to do, and then bring it back over here. You know I think your saying? jokes were, besides the San Francisco joke, I think, uh, <laughs> no, it probably kills in San Francisco, I'm just saying, like, we have our own parking problems, but uh, <laughs> I like your jokes, I just think you need to fine tune them a little more. Yeah, cool. yeah. Make more, like, your opening premise a little more specific so we know what you're, what you're getting at. Do you understand the, the what The idea saying? is great. I mean, half the t days I wake up and only talk to my dog, and, like, the first person I talk to is, like, at 10 p.m. at night, right. you know? So it, there's something, too, just only talk. I like it. I like I, to, Absolutely. Really, I can completely relate to that. I, I totally, you know, when I see other cute dogs, I, you know. Yeah, I'm like I'm a sucker for it. Like you ever go on Facebook and someone shows some dude just getting rocked by a punch, you're like, ha, ha like, and then you see someone like just doing something mean to a dog, you're like, you're a fucking asshole! You know, I totally relate to that, man. You know, like I have a soft spot for dogs, man. I totally get what you're saying. They're just fine-tuning it so everyone understands what your punchline is. Why do you like why do you what's the reason that you like dogs more than humans? Uh bigger dicks, right? Bigger dicks. <laughs> Uh, cause they're you cute. You think dogs have bigger dicks than I think humans? some got big old dicks. Really? It's, yeah. What kind of dog dick have you seen, Sam? It's bigger than I've been on the internet. <laughs> really? It's comparing it to his dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Searching. I've seen some weird shit. Wow. It's like a lot, or back to your question, it's harder to alienate dogs in social situations, I think. Right. That's interesting. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Can you give an example? Like, what do you mean by... Uh, in social situations. Dogs don't aren't weirded out when you just don't have anything to say to their question, and you just kind of stare at them, and you're like, "Hi." Yeah. yeah. They don't. They don't judge like me this. when I'm fucking. So that's why I like them. I'm not judging you, dude. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of advice. Oh, yeah, that's great. The Brian said judging. I'm, Brian's totally judging you. Yeah, I'm not judging. Yeah. I'm no, no, no. Brian said. Ju the word judging, right. he didn't say it. Yeah. yeah. And then you responded like he said it. Yeah. The whole thing went off its tracks, and now we're in the woods. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sam's, Sam's thinking about dog pick yeah. right now. I just didn't want him to feel bad. It was a little bad. off the track, and I just fucking gave it a little power steer. That one was, uh, we're going backwards right now. Hayden. Hayden. <laughs> uh, what's your last name? Uh, Greif Neal. What? Wow, that's what you wrote here. Do you realize a it? How do you know you have bad handwriting? Is I do. Yeah. You're not working on it. It's, it's, like, it. it's diagnosed hand bad handwriting. It's, what do you do for work? I do customer service. And for what? For a online shopping app in the San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. What's the online shopping app? It's called app? Wish. It's called Wish. I think I know oh, about that. That's do a, you? Yeah, it's a weird one, right? Where it's just like, so it says like, it's cut down from this price and now it's this price. It so does that say one. that. Yeah. I oh. know that one. I know he's staring at each other pretty intensely. <laughs> well, he's on the show and I'm hosting it right now. Okay. So that's, that's <laughs> you want to go sit back with Haiti and be a homophobe, Sam? Uh, <laughs> I, have an app, I have an app called Wish that I invented too, but it's for dying children to fulfill their wishes. But you, no, you, you invented the shopping that. one. That's just as good. <laughs> What'd you say? I said you invented that. I invented it. What do you do for fun, Hayden? Yeah. Uh, this. 
Yeah. Also, yeah. like in video games, I guess. What's your favorite video game? <laughs> Minecraft. Oh, my wow. God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, listen to that. Laugh I go, been holding in. Wow. What's your favorite? Yeah, it's the best one. Why? What? Because it's like Legos, but a video game, and there's also zombies in it. And Did you, you not really... know Legos suck in real life? <laughs> <laughs> they were the fucking worst. For who? They suck. Legos oh, only suck. Kid? They're great. Only the nerds like Legos. Uh, no, you're fucking not. Oh, oh, Lego oh, movie. Oh, Get it, me. That's me. The Lego no, movie was that, awesome. I was a fucking dork, too. Should have been a fucking guy to know. That movie is great. No, no, that what movie. you just said. Hold on. What you just said. The Lego movie. Yeah. Yeah. Anything with funny voices is awesome. No, that's not <laughs> when true. Somebody gives that me was a, actually a really good movie. When somebody dude. gives me a bucket, that was actually they're a like, great fucking we movie. get to put it together, then we can play with it. And you can't even go fuck yourself. No, dude. <laughs> I love to fuck myself. <laughs> Legos were great. Leave them alone. Man. What do you think? No, DeRosa, you have a real stance. What'd you get? Raped by Legos? I don't yeah, care whose toes I step on. Dude, yeah. did somebody you shove say? Lego guys up your ass when no, you were No, he just kid? always bugged me, because you'd go over a kid's house to have fun, and he'd take out a bucket of fucking Legos, and you'd put the thing together, and then you just stare at it. You couldn't even do anything with it. It was like assholes that like yeah, model planes. Like three years old. What do you want to do with it? Uh, Cook I, math? I like, seriously. Planes. You liked model planes? Yes. Thank I you. swear to God, I could have, I would, I would have. I only wanted to put it together to smash it over my dad's head for giving it to me <laughs> in the first place. You I never, you never liked Legos. No, he's a, wow. He's a, he's he's a, did you like, ever have your own Legos, or were you yeah. mad because you'd only go over no. your friend's no. no. Legos? I'll tell you. you never I'll got tell you Legos. what. I'll tell you why I didn't have Legos because I was smart enough to ask for real toys like GI Joe uh, that I could play with. Okay, fucking GI Joe's great. This little dude with no dick. Fuck you and your G.I. Joe. Wait, are you saying... Legos rock. Are you saying... They come with Batman. They come with all the Avengers. Sam, Sam, Sam. Star Wars. Calm down, Sam. Let us talk. Like, are you saying G.I. Joe is... You like Legos saying, better than G.I. Joe. I'm not G. saying G.I. Joe's... Yeah, Legos fucking whoops some ass. You are a fucking spick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Order <laughs> <laughs> You're a spit. I'm fine with that. No, I mean, I can't believe, Joe, you're anti-Legos. That's, That's just insane. un Because his parents could only afford Lincoln Law. <laughs> <laughs> Jihadi Joe over what? here, this fucking asshole. Ain't no and by the way, you can't play Legos when you're three because they're right. too small. You play when you're like six to 12, and they fucking suck. They don't Those suck. are the years where you're like, I want to blow shit up. I want to see fucking, I want to make cars go fast. I want to, you know, that's I'm glad fun. you weren't my friend when I yeah, was seriously. How about that? I'm if I was your friend. You know what you would have done? You would have block blocked me. Yeah. No. <laughs> I would have shown you a different way. And you'd be even farther in this. You'd be doing your second car. So How, much do you like How much do you like Legos? What was the last thing you were on, DeRosa? How much, how much do you like Legos? It's been do, you a while. Like, do you like wait in line for the Legos at the Lego stores? Are you that big of a Lego guy right now? No, I like... I have Minecraft now, man. Right. Yeah. So right. you don't need it. Yeah, you buy Minecraft once. I don't have to buy them every time. Do you have Minecraft expensive. on your phone also? They are yeah. weird. Did you come here with a bunch of people? Like uh, sat down? I came here with three. Okay. And you Ooh, did very they? German, by the way. Yeah. Came here with three. <laughs> I know. Like I didn't know this was weird until like uh, Inglorious Bastards. Inglorious Bastards came out. <laughs> uh, I was like, this is just how I do three. You've been always doing that. <laughs> yeah. And you're not from Germany. No. <laughs> Why not Are you this? German? Because this is more comfortable. Are you really? German? Do you have German blood really? in you? I do. It's like Jewish German blood or something. Oh, so you hate yourself. I do. <laughs> Why do you think I do comedy? Yeah. Where, Where are you from? You're good, dude. You're I'm funny. from Oakland. <laughs> Oakland? Yeah. Okay. Right. You like you like Too Short? Uh, <laughs> not really familiar with Too Short. Wow. wow. So you don't like Oakland? Wow. Wow. He's a spy, guys. He's oh, a spy. Goodness. I can't believe you don't know about Too Short. He's That's a rapper that loves sex. Dude, he, a woman so died much. blowing him. Oh, cool. Yeah. How did that happen? Because his dick was too long. No, he she, he, he blew a load in what her the, throat. Where are you people? Too Short, remember? You guys Fucking blow job Betty? Nobody knows that? Crowd. They're too busy loving to eat Let, let, the, let the record you know show I didn't like the crowd for episode 95. <laughs> I'm turning on you guys. On fun crowd. How did, how did the girl that blew too short die? His dick was too long. I ain't got nothing. I got somebody fucking sneeze in the main room. That's 500 feet away from you. 
<laughs> Here's the, you want to hear the best two shirt lyric? Yeah. He's got a song about gold diggers, and he goes, You look like. You, you look at a dick like it's a slot machine. It's <laughs> so hilarious. The erect, yeah, the erect dick, just a chick pointing oh, yeah. it's to crumb. suck it like it's a. Oh, I like that. Aggressive hipsters. That's what we have here. Check now. out that song. It's called Broke Bitch. Broke Bitch. Yes. Short. Yeah, but too learn short. your culture, your history of your area, bro. It will help your act. It was fun to meet you. Thank you. Hey, yeah, you are up, dude. Hey, 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 you are up for pauses? So, no, I'm not gay. Really? I, I know I come across as gay. Like, everybody's like, who oh, cares? Then we are not done everyone. with Hayden. Sit back down. Uh, hey, hey. No! Thanks right, for coming, Hayden, dude. Hey. Yeah, I love you, Hayden. Yeah. Great job. Good Thank job. You. You Hayden, you love want be. Raised by Wendy. Play Minecraft. One and one. Yeah. One and one. Mom and a sister. Oh, mom and a dad. Oh, mom and a dad. Oh, I thought you had really two gay not dads. Gay. I mean, I'm, I get it all the time, but I'm just double checking. I'm just flamboyant. That's fine. Wow, dude. that's awesome. You're theatrical. Fuck oh, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Be Maybe. who you want to be, dude. I love it. San Francisco, too. But, okay. Dude, San Francisco. Right. Dude, by the way, West Hollywood, way more gay than San Francisco. Right. Okay? Absolutely. This is, I mean, dude, yeah. there's a billboard right now of a man's asshole on what, on San Mike Bull. I don't even know if they're advertising. It's just a man's and asshole. West Hollywood, okay? West Hollywood is like mean gay. Yeah. It's, the, yeah, it's, it's, it's gay <laughs> snarky, which yeah. is the new bad guy in every fucking film. Have you seen that? Yeah. Gay snarky? I've been trying to fucking get cast. Oh, movie. yeah. You <laughs> That's all I want is to be the bad guy in a fucking movie. It blows my mind that it hasn't happened. Yeah. I, I've, been, I've had a joke that I've been doing about it for like the last year, literally waiting for there to be a director in the room laughing, just like, of course. It's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. You have a Taylor Negron vibe yeah, to you. Exactly. He played the villain in The Last Boy Scout. It drives so me crazy. There's like people whose oh, careers are exploding because yeah. they are playing gay these bad guys. Right. Yeah. It's Who's fucking the King, King Joffrey. Well, Guys here for Hayden. Hayden! Hayden is on Twitter. Hayden just did the walk off. He's the Moth Prince on Twitter. And Daniel White is at Dan of Comedy. And Kip Hart is at Kip underscore Hart. I, I find it funny that you just immediately thought he was gay. And you called him gay like three times during his interview. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I, for somebody that gets so much right. shit towards I, 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 I completely, I mean, I completely, completely assume, just like I assume that Haiti is black. That, uh, that, that Hayden from San Francisco was gay. Was I the only person you don't... that thought that? No, I didn't think he was gay. Yeah, but I don't care. Do I now we're like making it an issue. Yeah. 99% of the time, care. the person goes, oh yeah, gay as fuck. When I ask that question, they're like, just dick, dick, dick. But just, yeah. I don't Maybe know, he doesn't just... want to talk about it on a fucking I, big I podcast. It. I mean, I think that was pretty obvious. It got weird. And uh, well, I mean, I think it's just weird because some of us just don't see gay or straight. We just see people. That you made it right. <laughs> You're so full of shit. You're so full of shit. By the way, I don't get a... You're really throwing me under the... Uh, I don't get a gay... Really throwing me under the gay billboard on that one. I don't get a gay vibe from you at all. I get a vibe of, like, a guy that stuffs animals in his basement. All right, all right, you son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. How dare you say I stuff animals? <laughs> Your next comedian goes by the name of John Gammon, everybody. <laughs> Hey everybody, how's it going? I, uh, my girlfriend just, she moved in with me, right? And for the third time recently, she quit her job. Fuck my life. I gotta, I just got done dealing with one dude's fucking bills. I gotta deal with two people's bills now. And it's just crazy. I wake up just out of my mind like there's a fire in the house. Like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? And dude, it's 8 a.m. And that's how I wake up, like, every day now. I walk down the stairs, I, like, sit down, I watch her shoveling breakfast food into her mouth. <laughs> All this breakfast food that I bought for the both of us, right? And uh, I, I know it's a mistake, but I just wonder right out loud, like, did you possibly, um, I wonder right out loud, uh, did you, uh, <laughs> What exactly is the reason you quit this, this job this time? And she goes, John, I'm a boss. And I'm just like, dude, why are you saying that? You know? 
Because you're trying. I fucked that up so bad. <laughs> Keep going if you want to finish. No, it's terrible. I, I, she, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's. Oh, you know, she's Chinese, but she's really black. But I love her and all all this fucking rant bullshit that I wrote today. How many times have you been on stage? Uh, a good amount. Really? Oh, what is that? Fuck. Like? I guess my barometers are just off. <laughs> <laughs> You need to break oh, up with that girl immediately. I know. Like, there's no, not even don't. a joke there. That's just you hating your yeah, girl. No, I know. You just totally <laughs> used it as a minute of therapy. Why? <laughs> and just bounced it off 150 just... therapists at once. Yeah. yeah the the arrangement of the joke is completely wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know? It's like she just moved in. That's just a joke right there. And you're like, and she quit her job. Now you've moved on to a totally different premise. You'd be like, she just moved in. Every time I come up in the morning, she just eating breakfast. There's a joke. Now you want to sit on that for a couple fucking minutes. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you, yeah, you totally. introduce, like, eight different premises with it opening up, and then you start trying to get the punchline. I, totally, I, I totally, like, fucked up the phrasing of it. I'm like, my girlfriend who lives with me. I totally It sounds like you have a lot of shit know. going on in your life, so let's find out about it, and let's just let the jokes rise to the top. Let's that's break good. this shit well, down. You ready? Let's do it, yes. Can I ask a question? Sure. What, what part of that joke is true? Because it doesn't sound oh, true. Oh, well, it's just the true. second time she, she... No, but I mean, is she really black? Is she really Asian? Oh, yeah, she really is black. She's black. Does she really yeah. talk like that? Yeah, she told me that actually today. I wrote I'm that a joke boss. today. All right. I so that up it's just bit. coming off. It was just coming She's off like... She's not a boss. She's not even an employee. How That's my boss? joke I was trying to get to. I was like, she can't even handle being a fucking employee. But I fucked it up. It's wow. not even handle. You don't even have to say handle. She's an employee. You know? Which... Was she? She's not even an employee. She's not even an employee. Yeah. Was Thank she you. serious when she said I'm a boss? Was she really being angry? Was no, she, she was really serious. Okay. Now to get into all that shit. I get into like, so much yeah, more. Like, How when, long have you been dating this girl? A year. Wow. Yeah, Where did she work? Sorry, moved in. <laughs> she moved in. She you lives with me. Love that pussy, huh? <laughs> Just watching her shovel cereal into her mouth every morning. While she good tells stuff, you it was she's eggs, a boss. it was like fucking arugula. Oh, so she's going straight up like buffet style. Yeah, yeah. she expects that shit from now on. That's expensive. Wow. wow. So wow. where'd you, where you meet her? Yeah, you can't keep you can't keep giving her the queen princess treatment with all those eggs. No, <laughs> you're gonna have to put your foot down at some point. But they're free range. You gotta remember. They're yeah, good. okay. There you go. uh, but yeah, I mean the situation was. Where'd just you like, meet this chick? Tinder. Wow. wow. Tinder was out a year ago. Yeah. 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 Time flies. Dude. By the way, <laughs> dead. By the way, Tinder has this new offer for twenty bucks a month that lets you go backwards one if you accidentally swipe to the left. For twenty bucks yeah, a month. Yeah, over thirty if you gotta pay twenty bucks. If you're under thirty, it's ten dollars. Yeah, but still, so are ten dollars? Yeah. Who wants to pay ten dollars just so you can accidentally go back one? No. So now weird. you can only do so many likes. What? You can only it's... like so many people, and then you gotta stop, and then you got to wait twelve hours before you can start liking people. Is that true? How many? <laughs> I don't know the exact number. That, I'm trying to find out. But, that uh, fucking app is the downfall of this culture. No, it's great. <laughs> no, it, here's why it's not great. It here's is Here's why great. it's not great, because nobody uses it for what they're supposed to use Which it for. Which is what? Meeting and fucking. That's what it's meant to be used for. Everybody I meet is like, I met my girlfriend on Tinder. What the fuck is that? That's how lazy people are now. They're literally like, swipe, swipe. Why haven't I met my Prince Charming yet? Swipe, swipe. Die alone. I love it. Absolutely. There's so much you can get into, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's the fact that she quit her job is almost the third or fourth thing you should be talking about. Right. In fact, you know, it's like your 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 girlfriend's black. That's yeah. interesting because you're yeah. the whitest motherfucker I've ever met. <laughs> and you're surprised she doesn't have a job. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. There's so many things that just can't. Who just ruined comedy? <laughs> she take a bite of food while to... you're choking, you fucking moron. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, you know, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is about just organizing what you want to talk about. And uh, you just were just... So you like, introduced 19 different premises. John, let yeah. me ask you this. Where are you from? Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah. Ohio. Beautiful. Jerry, how fucking dare you, you son of a bitch. I'm from Youngstown, from Ohio. What? My ex-wife was from Cleveland. Oh, all right, well. Okay, anyway, fuck. Do you know John. his ex-wife? John, 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 how long have you been in L.A.? Uh, six years. Six years. What have you been doing for work? 
Uh, I've been acting on a show on ABC, The Middle. You guys ever seen it? Oh, congrats, oh, man. Have you guys seen this at all? What the fuck are you doing here? Are you, are you a, a the joke principal? is that only people in the middle of the country watch this fucking thing. <laughs> well, you guys should watch it. But, dude, why are you doing this? You're on TV. You made it's it. it's not working out, buddy. Why is it <laughs> Show. I know, but I fucking hate it. Everybody tells me what to say, how to say it. It's okay, so I respect that. Yeah, you're yeah. 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 not, not selling out. Yeah, but don't say that because it's a blessing you're on the show. Right. And eventually, someday, you might not be on a show. Right. But you just want to expand. Yeah. So I totally understand that. No, I really love stand up. I never had the balls till I fucking hated acting. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Dude, so how this. Long game is a shit show, dude. Yeah. You don't want to get <laughs> Stay on network. I will. Fucking up at 3 a.m. in Cleveland eating a Big Cable's Mac because you can't get off the show high. Fucking getting drunk with the only waitress that will drink with you. It's fucking miserable. You, it's not, Cleveland does suck. Especially during the You should have opened up <laughs> with I got my own show on ABC and just listen to how many girls would instantly start laughing at right. everything you had to say. <laughs> you, you, could, you could delete You would just start around. crushing. Vaginas would just start blooming right there. Gotcha. How long have you been? How long has that show been? Being made? Holy shit! A chick from since Tinder. Since now the guy who's got a national television show. No, it's just this girl just hit the fucking jackpot of fucking Tinder. Nice Are you person. wearing condoms or are you just blast away that no, no, purple no. pussy? I wish I drew blanks. So what? I don't know. I wish I drew blanks. So you're blasting away. What's so you're gonna make this horror story worse. Sam, he said no, he's no, wearing, wearing condoms. Yo, my whole out game is fucking <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Yeah, just trying to say, I feel like we should do an intervention or something. We're talking to him. We're, we're, we're all I, talking to him. I John. think yeah. you're, a, you're a ranty comic at heart, I, yeah. and you're not letting yourself rant. So what you need to do is you need to figure out why you feel the way about these things, what's really bothering you about these things, and then get on stage and rant it out. And put put your anger into it. Put your angst into it. Now, don't be a lunatic. You can't get up like, I've been carrying this fucking whore. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, just be, put your annoyance into it. Be be annoyed, not angry. That's what everybody used to tell me. Because I'm a ranty and guy. Yeah. yeah. But, and then when you're not feeling upset about that anymore, that's when you know you move on. You don't care about it anymore. Move on to your next thing. What season you know? is the middle at? Six. 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 Season six. fucking six. Yeah. You've been employed for six seasons on an ABC what show. What are you gonna do? Get the fuck out of here. Same time. There you go. Come back again soon. I love you, John. You're an amazing Christ. person. For How do you know I have to kiss your ass? This is crazy. It's amazing. Six Jesus fucking seasons Christ. on network. He's coming to the attic of the comedy oh. store trying to find himself. Come back out of here. Calm down, Tony. 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 Six seasons and not one person in this, this room like, knew the show, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. But it's ABC money. That's what's crazy. Yeah, it's money. money. Patricia Heaton stars on that show. That's money. Yeah. It's yeah. a money show. Yeah. I loved uh, Patricia Heaton and uh, Birdman. She's not in Birdman. The producers <laughs> don't listen to this. <laughs> and some of you get killed <laughs> off, dude. <laughs> that fucking sucked. <laughs> what was the joke? It was so bad. I won't even repeat it. <laughs> you love Patricia it's, 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 Keaton it's, it's, in Birdman? It's because Keaton rhymes with Keaton. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> oh, my God. It was so bad. It was so bad. Oh, my God. So <laughs> You see him on Carson Daly tonight. <laughs> yeah. NBC, 1.30 in the morning. Me on NBC and John Gammon on ABC. That's what network has uh that what that's what network has come to. John is at underscore John Gammon on Twitter. He has a million followers. He definitely needs to break up with you definitely need to break up with your girlfriend, dude. Yeah, I mean dude. that's just that's just you pain. Don't, you don't You're just yeah, pain dude. in pain. You should right be now. fucking everything right now. You don't, <laughs> you don't need it. And I know what you're going through. I hooked up with a black girl once and I swore it was the warmest vagina that I ever felt. It turned out it turned out she just had a flu and I was an idiot. <laughs> Nothing on that art. Right. NBC's Carson Daly tonight. <laughs> One Ah, uh, that's John Gammon. You fucking sons of bitches. I can't believe you turned the Carson Daly thing into a fucking runner. You asshole killed him. I fucking did. I love it. You son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Do we have to do everybody in the bucket? No, we don't do everybody in the bucket. I got nervous, man. Don't get nervous. Turn it around in there. I know, right? Michael Perkinson. You ever had your arm?
warm so deep inside a woman. You look her in the eyes, you slowly pull it out and say, I couldn't find the condom. Fuck all y'all. Fuck, this is already hard. in the street to teach birds about risk and reward. <laughs> oh, man, I feel like Neil Patrick Harris doing the Oscars. God, fuck this. Why is comedy so hard? No, fucking light, no? <laughs> uh, my dryer lets me put the colors in with the whites because uh, my dryer's not a racist. <laughs> Fuck yeah, the stuff you do in between your jokes is hilarious. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's amazing. It's like completely backwards. It's, it's like his jokes are commercial breaks. Yeah. In between. <laughs> in between. I would love just to hear all the middle parts edited together in one album. Just like, oh, oh, it's heavy breathing. By the way, I think this is, what, your third or fourth time on the show, and every time it goes like this, and you're one of our favorites. It's unbelievable. You have perfect comedic timing. Your act, me, your act matches your look. Yeah. guy wearing shorts in March is... Yeah. Uh, you come up, fits, you, throw the, you throw the empty cup with confidence, which is my favorite thing that I've ever seen anybody do upon arriving to the stage. Just blatantly taking one last sip of drink because he planned it and then throws it into a meaningless corner just littering. It just it, floats. Just littering at one of the most, you know, and another classic comedy clubs in the world. Just fuck this place. And just then after the first joke you start panicking. Like the confidence of the guy that throws the empty cup and the confidence that you had after that first joke were like two completely different people. And the fact that you can make that switch in 17 seconds is incredible. Like I feel like I almost couldn't say anything unfunny enough other than maybe making a Patricia Heaton Michael Keaton line that would possibly make me lose that much confidence and panic that quickly. It was bad. But it's great. You're so good at it. It was so bad. I've been doing it for a while. So when you thought about your act you put together and you said, okay, I, I gotta open with something that lets them know who I am. And you said, I'm gonna open up with my fucking classic fist I can't find the condom joke. It really set a tempo for this act. Uh, what were the other jokes that maybe didn't quite make the cut to open with? Well, I, I'm running out of I'm running out of jokes. So I'm trying to keep it new here. You should run from all your jokes, by the way. <laughs> was that was that a true story? Don't be mean. Did you really have to find a condom in your? Like I fucked a girl. Uh, I've done it I fucked too. The, oh, there we go. I fucked the there tampon into a girl once, and two days later she got really sick, and I had to try to do the same thing, put my hand in there, try to reach it, and then I got the oh, got the thing from the oven, of it. like the thorn right, thing, right, and, right, and right, I pitched right. that little. No, no, it was just like that. It was that's called that. saving you. He just took all the fucking focus from you. But here's what I don't get. Here's what I don't get. Another successful actor comes down to do stand up. You were so good in Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Why <laughs> waste your time doing this? <laughs> Super bad rock. Yeah. Are you from Philly? Yeah, right. You look like you should open a restaurant next, next to Fat Sal's. Oh, oh. Jesus. No, don't oh. wait, still let it go! I was don't. going there! Next to Fat Sal's, call Keep going. It was this call, bad before. Keep call going. It, call it Skinny Joe's. And then, I don't know, we dress oh. like hipsters. Fuck it. That's a weird... Oh, no, that was bad. You complimented me. So by, by the way, he's done this before. I went for <laughs> Michael's... <laughs> Michael's first time on this show, I lit his ass up. And your second and third time on the show. And when you make fun of him, for some reason, he does this weird thing where he goes, Oh, yeah? Well, you? What? You're, you? Huh? You? Oh, here we go. Well, he's been, uh, by the way, whatever you're about to hear, he's been thinking about for about three weeks. I have. That's when his last appearance on the show was. So here we go, everybody. Let's see. Three weeks of writing. Michael Perkinson's Tony Hinchcliffe Rivers joke. Here, get, catch your breath. Wait, 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 wait. You want to grab your empty cup and toss it again so that you have some momentum going into this? Go ahead, Michael. Tony! Oh, shit. There's the setup. I've heard that before. Tony. That's right. You sound how Justin Bieber looks. He looks great. What are you talking about? <laughs> Justin Bieber, it's notorious. It's all reverse compliments. I thought he was going to... He, he pulls fat sounds out of me. I thought he was going to go even fatter something. Right, right. And he goes, skinny, yeah. Joe, right, right. dressing nice, kind of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, you gotta, do you understand the insults? <laughs> Dude, the saddest thing is that I know this guy will be on television exactly. within a year. That's okay, exactly yeah. what I've always he'll said. probably be on the middle by the end of the month. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that you do, you wore shoes this week. This is like the first week you didn't wear flip flops. Because it's fucking cold outside, Brian. Why don't you wear pants? Because I fucking hate pants. Really want to know the truth? Yeah. Yeah, that's the truth. Because the baby has six boys. All right, every time I wore pants, I wound up getting pushed down on the ground, wet grass knees all day, and I'm traumatized for life from it. There you go, fucking 4K cameras. How's that look? <laughs> you want me to go talk to a therapist? John, damn it, can we See work something I mean? out together? Like, just, like you said that, you just did it again. Your style is incredible. Like, yeah. you try to be funny, and then when it goes bad, you just fucking panic, and that's so funny. <laughs> I would almost tell you to write better jokes, but you know what, man? I think that's your fucking thing. I, mean, I, I think you're hands. the guy that people are going to go, I'm going to take you to go see this guy, Michael Perkins. We're going to heckle the fuck out of him, and it's going to be great. Yeah, <laughs> when you tap into it, it's going to be yeah, amazing, because yeah. right now you don't know how to tap into yeah. this retarded yeah. I have, you have. I, have, I have good days. I, have good, I, I feel sometimes. Yeah. So sometimes you, you don't wear pants because your younger brothers, my older, you, brother. my older brothers, like push that. you down on the ground and yeah. you got dirty knees. Uh, wet knees. Wet, wet knees. knees. All day wet knees. Do you think you're going to get wet knees now? Do you think if you wear I'm, jeans right I'm now, they're going to fall down more times than I did then? I like to party, Brian Redband. How about you, huh? Huh? You like you like like an asshole. I'm like an asshole too. I'm, I'm not fucking I like shy. you, dude. I do like you. Come on, man. You know? Here we go. Did, did, I, did I go out tonight thinking I was going to end up licking an asshole? Same thing with getting wet knees, Brian Red Band. I could watch Michael Perkins <laughs> all, all day. Here I go. So Here I go. Yeah, that was funny. That it happens really and you fucking hate the fact that it happened after you do it. I love that you said that. That you uh, that's, that's funny. I'm serious. Write that down. I'm being very serious. Write down Can licking an you, asshole. Will like, you remember any of this tomorrow? Oh, yeah, man. This, this is nothing. <laughs> I got two more mics. I got two more mics before I just completely black out and fall asleep with a handful of jizz and fucking in and out. Why are you Sorry. holding the jizz? Who's yeah. jizz? My, oh. Why aren't you throwing it? At this point, who gives a shit? It's LA. <laughs> I'm fucking over it. I'm fucking over it. Dude. Hey, how's it going, guy? You want to go? I feel like out? you and Hayden wow. are going to hang out after the show. Yeah, yeah totally. Oh, dude, dude, wrap it out of the hat. Hayden's gay. Come on, Hayden. Where are you at, man? Come on, man. Come on. Hayden be Hayden. I don't know. Oh, he pranced up here like a goddamn fluffy rabbit. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's gay. Come You're on, like Hayden. a Chris Farley character. You really are, man. <laughs> Oh, turn this around. Where's your van? Down by the river? Seriously. Hi, I'm uh, Peter Griffin. I like to, uh... Oh, my, oh my God. God. All right. oh, I know. Stick my... <laughs> I oh, fuck! It. You are one of the funniest lesbian comedians I've ever seen. There he goes. Michael Perkinson, everybody. He's on Twitter at L.C. Perkinson. Right. Yeah. No. Here we go, guys. Uh, your final part of the show. We have two lovely young ladies that do a brand new minute each week. We literally, like, every week, they write a new minute. That's 52 new minutes a year. They're the only comedians that we know that even do that shit. And they do it every week here. We watch them get better and better. And it's always fun. Uh, going up first this week, you know from the Dysentery podcast. Really fun. She always, like... Sometimes she'll take a small topic, like an inanimate object, and rant about it and break it down. And it's always fun and goofy and wacky. It's the one and only Sarah Weinstein. Here she is. Why are they decorated? Like, why are they in that frilly thing? It looks like a dress. Who the fuck decided that? I'm not dressing up other inanimate objects. There's not ribbons hanging off my toothbrush. Why is my toothpick wearing a dress? I'm not putting tinsel on my potato peeler. Why is my toothpick wearing a dress? I don't, want, I don't want it. I don't want to use it to hold shit together. Like a sandwich, it's not big enough. The only thing it's good at holding is an olive or like a 
tea sandwich. Matter of fact, though, if I'm going to have an olive, I want a toothpick for that. I prefer it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's commitment right there. Uh, at any point, you could have pulled a Michael Perkinson and gone, oh, fuck. But you didn't, and I like that. You stayed in the pocket, and you kept trying to knock it out. I kept trying with that toothpick. What happened with this tooth? What happened this week with the toothpick that you're so pissed off at? I just feel like... You've reached your boiling point. No, it point. just used a lot, stupidly. I always find them gross. I'm not a toothpick guy. I it, I hate it when I'm hanging out with somebody that in fact has a toothpick. Like I think it's gross getting stuff out of your teeth in front of somebody. Like and it's sort of weird how like casual it became. See, like, but that's fu see that's funny. You should be telling the joke like that. You're you're putting so much of that character on it that it's ruining. Really? You're who you are. Yeah, who you you've think. been doing coffee shops too long. Like, um, it's, <laughs> seriously, seriously though, like do like if you just came in and you go, I'm sick of seeing toothpicks everywhere. It's bugging me. And all of a sudden now it's funny because it's like there's a perspective on it. Take right. that character out of it. Yeah, you, you don't you, need that. You seem to have a, a rage about it, but you express no rage about it. Do you understand? Like you seem re not that you have to be up here. You know, loose black style ranting. Oh, what's up, my dude? You know, but it's like you have to have a little bit. I felt like there should be a little more oomph always, into your into your dislike of tooth. The okay. funniest thing that always happens with your style is when these inanimate objects become humanized or talked about how it affects you in a human way. We pretty much just heard about how toothpicks are dressed up, and we didn't apply it too much to anything that affects you? Is there somebody that uses a toothpick that you dislike in particular? I mean, I'm a toothpick guy, unlike Tony, so... <laughs> is, uh, is pro there toothpick. A but reason you're pro toothpick, too? You guys uh, pro toothpick? I don't know. What's wrong? Why, why are you not a toothpick guy? I've never heard somebody go, you know, I'm just not a toothpick guy. For what? <laughs> for picking your teeth, oh, for, for your keeping teeth, yeah. club sandwiches together, for sure. fucking cleaning no, out I, holes I, and I, sure. I believe them. Oh, yeah, I believe yeah. in them for the sandwich thing, absolutely. I, I like toothpicks for that. Uh, but to be clearing your teeth publicly, it's just not my thing. Just be you. <laughs> That's the key. Like it's there's, there's just be you doing it. Because when you're you, you'll get into your real emotion about it, and then suddenly you can, you'll be. If if you're approaching it from the idea of this character, then it's just. Everything's gonna be. That's a low ceiling. Everything's gonna be kept under in, inside of that voice. It seemed, right. it seemed more yeah. like it needed more tags. Like the dress thing, I like, but then you should have something else should have happened. Instead, you just dress twice. You know, yeah. you, you should have been like a. Pawn. Are you are you kind of this deadpan kind of delivery in life? Are you are you always like that? Yeah. Yeah. You're like I'm just talking like, right now. Like, do you guys always sound like cool and normal? But like, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. Really. Yeah. Life. Okay. Right. But even talking like this, you're still you're still deadpan. You're still a little monotone, but it sounds natural. It sounds like who right. you are. Yeah, this is uh, this is still good. This works. This yeah. is what you yeah. should be doing, delivering the joke. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of just purposely trying to bump the brakes so much. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think well, you need to hit him quite that hard. It's hard as shit. I mean, this is stuff we all still struggle with. It's not an right. easy thing to do. Right. Day to day, I right. struggle with drugs and alcohol. Day to day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm pissed because I wanted to talk about how. Like, I always feel like it's, like, on the brink of disaster when you, like, encounter an interview. Like, you're on the brink of hurting yourself. Like, right. on the brink of puncturing the mouth and getting whipped. Right. And that's what I, I wanted to say. That, exactly. But I've actually done that before where the top part broke off and the, the rest of the toothpick was in the sandwich I didn't know about. And I took a bite. Oh, oh, right in oh. the tongue in the top of my mouth. Ooh. Man, that sucks. That's terrible. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very <laughs> sharp object. <laughs> I still like toothpicks, man. I have no problem. It's made of wood. Toothpicks made of wood. Made of wood. <laughs> well, there you go. Thank Chip you. away at it. Toothpick. Good <laughs> stuff. It's funny. Good stuff. Back. It's another new minute every week. They have yeah, to do great. new minute. Or can yeah. they be like, oh, I did this minute yeah, six they, months ago. They, Here's how it's worked. Now. They do the they do the minutes that continue to work for them, and there are other sets that they do that are longer other places. You know, this is just where you where you get to hear it first. It's like the. Uh, you get, to hear it, you get to either hear it first or you hear it last. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it works out. Right. They take a new angle or they don't. But right. They've been killing. Uh, your next and final comedian of the night just won her, I believe, fourth or fifth roast battle in a row. She's undefeated in roast battle. She dropped out of the University of Florida after her first time on stage here on Kill Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and the only Kimberly Congdon. Everybody. Go Gators! Come on, Patrick. I guess I want to 
talk about some weird things that I've been thinking about lately. Uh, one of those is that the Gerber baby just turned 85, <laughs> which means she's most definitely eating Gerber again. <laughs> Suicide hotlines for extreme Muslims are just over-the-phone job interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one of our grandmas have fucked. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Penny is a really bad name for an orphan. <laughs> I think I've been thinking of these things because I smoke a lot of weed, um, but it's always, it's for a medicinal purpose. I have chronic living. <laughs> uh, <laughs> come and throw out some quick jabs. I like it. Oh, so Jab. Penny, all grown up. I love the, uh, yeah, that was great. I especially mm. love the segue of, what was it again? It was like, a, all right. <laughs> like she was just checking off laughs like it was nothing. Very funny. Thank you. Those yeah. are well-written jokes. Yeah. It's not usually how I tell them either. It's weird. Well, it was interesting because it was very natural and it, it just worked yeah. well. The problem with that style is now you got to write a lot of jokes. Right. But mm -hmm. it's it was funny, but man. It, she she usually you know it's like more on a topic. Usually it's one minute, so I think those will mix well with the other you know chunks of stuff yeah. that you have written. Those are always great to have. You know, some it happens to me all the time where. You know, you end up writing a four-minute bit, and then a six-minute bit, and a two-minute bit, and then all of a sudden you do those bits, and you've had the light for two minutes, and you know you have one minute to wrap it up, and you just end in one thing, and you're like, how do I fucking kill and get out of here in a minute and 15 seconds? And you gotta, you know, just plow it sometimes. And right. Jimmy's random thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Great work. Oh, yeah. Well written. Well, right. well written. Congratulations on your most recent roast battle victory. What's your record now? Four and oh. Four and oh, ladies and gentlemen. That's every Tuesday here at midnight. Our sister show, our good friends over at the roast battle, Jeff Ross and Brian Moses, do it every Tuesday at midnight here. Kimberly, great yeah. job. Thank Kimberly you. Kimberly Pond, good everybody. Job. Very good job. Good job. There they are again, the ladies of Kill Tony. That's at Princess Shank on Twitter. That's at Kimberly Congdon on Twitter. Follow them. Be their fan. They're blowing up. They're going to be huge. When will this come out? hilarious every week. It's live right now. Live right now. But when will it be for download? Streaming right now yeah, and download, download you know, in a couple weeks. Okay. What do you want? What do you think? Well, do you I have think? a couple dates. I'd like to go a month ahead. Yeah, go a month ahead. All right, well, uh, at the end of the month, probably won't be out by then. I'm at the uh, comic strip in Edmonton the last month. And then uh, second week in April, I will be at the Amazing Laughing Skull. I'm very excited to finally play that club. So if you're in Atlanta, come out. Woo! 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 I love that joke. The Rosa is Joe Rosa Comedy on Twitter. What do you got coming up? Uh, I want to plug up sort of a promotion I'm doing. Um, this is absolutely true. Uh, some people that aren't uh, big fans of mine, uh, took the liberty of uh, bringing my album ratings down to one or two stars, all of them online. Here's what I really want to do right now. Let's go all the fucking way with this. Yeah. I want everybody to give me the lowest reviews you can. <laughs> I want to be the lowest rated comedian on the internet. I'm dead serious. I'm de no, I'm dead serious. I really want to do this. The reviews are really fucking funny. Leave crazy reviews about why my albums suck or why I didn't like them. Uh, and all platforms, iTunes, Amazon, uh, Google Play, whatever it is. Joe DeRosa, look up the albums. I don't give a shit if That's you've never amazing. even heard it. Just I love make that. and the funny the funniest reviews, I'll get in touch with you and uh, I'll send you like free shit. Um, Joe, and, I think you're really funny. Thank you. I thought you killed tonight. Somebody didn't get it. Joe DeRosa comedy on Twitter. There you guys. Go. Great Joshua, crowd. Joshua Meyerowitz is at Autistic Thunder on Twitter. Hilarious. Great job, Joshua Meyerowitz. Let me give a special shout out to 311 and the 311 crews, which had me this past week. I had so much fun with all the 311 fans and the band. Such a great time. Can't wait to do that. Everybody should plan for that a couple years from now. 311 crews to Jamaica is a lot of fun. Sounds Kill Tony 100 is April 13th in the main room of the comedy store. Wherever you live, get your airplane ticket now because Bruce Buffer will be there. Guys, uh, the last Death Squad Secret show was last Wednesday. We had almost 400 people come to the show. It was ridiculous. It sold out. The next one is March 11th. That's not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. And tickets are on sale right now. And April 1st, 
or the next two shows. And that's Go a to real Congress show, April 1st. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just a mean April Fool's Day joke. Yeah. Live audience, thank you for being here. I told you I hated you. I really like you.